hey book nerds welcome to my channel today i'm doing the book snob tag i saw this on heather's channel uh, her channel's bookables if you don't know her go check her out i really love her stuff um she makes a really interesting mix of videos she's quite a big channel but also she's just such a lovely person <laughs> like despite being a huge channel she always takes time and effort to kind of respond to my comments and also um i did a readathon where she was the host uh, when I was a really really new booktube channel and she commented on like all my videos relating to the readathon and she was pretty much my only commenter at that point so I, I've got a soft spot in my heart for her um so I'll link her video down below but I just thought it was a really interesting tag so I thought I would give it a go these are all kind of questions about how much of a book snob you are so I'm intrigued to see where I fall on the scale so the first question is, adaptation snob, do you always read the book before going to see the movie? As far as I'm aware, I think so. I do always try to read the book before I go to see the film or watch the TV adaptation. There's probably been a few exceptions. Um, City of Bones, I only made it halfway through the book before I went to see the movie, which <laughs> turned out to be the smart thing to do because that movie was absolutely awful. And I thought it missed all of the humour and the kind of positive attributes of that book. It just kind of lost all that in the adaptation. But yeah, in general, I prefer to read it. And I think it's because I would rather go into a book blind than a TV show blind. I don't really mind. Um, well, I do. I'm very fussed on spoilers either way. But I'd rather see... It, I, like, I can enjoy a TV show as an adaptation. Whereas if I know the story... I feel like I'll enjoy the book less. I don't know if that is accurate or it makes any sense, but that's just how I feel. So yeah, I, in general, I try and read the book first. The next question is format snob. You can only choose one format to consume your books in for the rest of your life. Do you pick physical book, ebook or audiobook? In a move that will shock no one, I'm going to pick ebook because I prefer to read ebooks. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's something about physical books that I don't dislike reading them that way but it feels weird to me now and it feels slower than it does reading on my kindle even though I know that's not true. I do really enjoy audiobooks and I've particularly gotten into them this year but if I had to pick one it would have to be ebooks because that's how I prefer to consume my books. The next question is ship snob would you date or marry a non-reader? See my instinct is to say no but I did date a non-reader, my ex-boyfriend did not read and I dated him for two years um, and that relationship was a big mistake which I'm not going to go on a tangent about that now so the thing is now reading is such an intricate part of my life that I feel like I don't think I, I don't think I could date someone who didn't understand my love of reading which is a slightly different question and I also don't think I could date someone who doesn't see any merit in reading, which again is a slightly different question. Because my partner, my partner does read, my partner did the English literature degree, but they don't um, read as much as me and they don't make as much time in their life for reading, which is fine because obviously they can choose to do whatever hobbies they want to do. But like, they, they would read more if they had more time or if they felt like they were able to fit it into their life better. So I think I could date someone who doesn't read but would like to read or enjoys reading. I don't think I could date or marry someone who doesn't want to read at all because I don't, I don't, I don't think I could understand a person like that enough for me to enter a proper relationship with them. But yeah, that's that's an interesting question. The next question is genre snob. You have to ditch one genre and you cannot read it for the rest of your life. Which one do you ditch? Okay, if I have to... So my instinct is to say a genre I would never read, like cowboy fiction, because, yeah, I just... Western fiction? That's what it's called, not cowboy fiction. Western fiction, because I just don't read it. If I have to pick a genre that I do dabble in... Um, I'd have to go with science fiction because I don't read a lot of 
really intense science fiction. I don't like that kind of science fiction. I do like books with a sci-fi element to them. Um, so it would be a sacrifice. But I feel like out of the genres I actually read, that could be a genre that I could do without. Which is interesting, because I thought I would say romance, but... I don't know, I like a bit of fluffy contemporary every now and again. And I don't know if I could do without that as much as I could do without the sci-fi. The next question is also hard, and that is uber genre snob. If you could only read one genre for the rest of your life, what would you pick? <sighs> I can't, like... I feel like I have to say thrillers because I read the most thrillers. There's the thrillers are the books that I have the most of on my TBR, so they're the book that I'm most interested in in terms of sheer number of books I want to read. But a part of me is saying that I rate horror books higher, and there's a lot of horror books I want to read as well, and I think I enjoy horror more when I read it, and like. What if I could never read a point horror book again? That would be really sad. <laughs> horror is a kind of... I don't want to say it's a more diverse genre either, but there's a lot of different types within the horror umbrella. Whereas there is different types of thrillers, but there's only a particular type of thriller that I love. So I think... Actually, I'm going to have to say horror. But... If that actually happened in real life, I would be so sad and I couldn't I couldn't pick. It would, it would be awful. The next question is community snob. What genre do you think receives the most um, criticism or snobbish attitude towards it from the bookish community? This is interesting. I have two answers for this. So if we're talking about in the world or like in the non booktube life, I think fantasy because I think that there is a massive, massive problem with fantasy being labelled as a young adult purely because it's written by women or because it has um kind of protagonists like a female protagonist who's in her 20s or something like that or it focuses on women characters and I think that that is a huge like that's probably the thing that I'm most aware of in the kind of um greater bookish community as it were that's the thing that's kind of been brought to my attention. However, I don't think that's the case on booktube. I think in general people are quite um, positive towards fantasy. So I think in terms of booktube, I would say young adult contemporary bears the brunt of, um, shall we say, negativity, <laughs> particularly if it's a romance contemporary, because I'm going to use an example here, The Selection by Kira Cass. This book is pure fluff. I read it two years ago and I would like to reread it soon. I really enjoyed it and it gets a lot of hate and I understand why it gets a lot of hate. But from reading the blurb, you know exactly what kind of book you're going to get. You're not going to get a challenging dystopian with lots of political intrigue and really strong character development and lots of twists and turns and a plot. Like, it's, it's a book about a prince choosing a girl out of like 20 girls to marry and if you go into that and you expect a book with a lot of sustenance then I think it's not fair to judge that book so negatively because you didn't get that because like you can tell from the cover and the description that it's going to be a fluffy young adult book with not a lot to it. And I think that's okay, but <laughs> yeah, I don't want to start any fights in the comments or anything or like upset any people, but I do think people judge young adult contemporary romances and just young adult romances in general a lot harsher than they judge other books. And the final question is snobbery recipient. Have you ever been judged harshly for because you were reading or because of what you read? And the answer to this is yes, not because I read. I'm very lucky I've never been, um, like, treated as a leper or anything because I read. I've never been bullied because I read. But I went to an all-girls school and I was quite into, like, video game magazines. Um, which, side note, now that I, my career is actually going to be designing video games, I feel vindicated by that, <laughs> just saying. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I read a lot of video game magazines and the girls in my class 
well, I distinctly remember one of them coming up to me and being like, you're reading the same magazine as my brother. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, don't you think that's a bad thing? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, so that happened a lot when I was at school. Um, but also, I find that... And I'm going to have to be very, very careful about what I say here because, I, like I said, I don't want to upset anyone. There is a certain type of male that I have met repeatedly at university and um, they always seem to have certain attitudes towards what I read. So they tend to react really positively when they find out I read and they find out I'm like into... I don't know, video games and all that kind of stuff and like comic book movies and I read graphic novels and that kind of thing. But then as soon as they find anything that deviates from their image of me, they get really weird about it. And I particularly, I had a housemate last year who, um, he just refused to accept what my tastes in books actually were. So he kept continuously recommending me really heavy going sci science fiction and fantasy books and like spy thrillers which I don't like any of those genres and I explained to him repeatedly that I did not like those genres and he was always like oh well just try it because you don't know if you like it and I was like no I do know I have tried those books before um oh, anyway slight tangent though but I get a lot of people who try to recommend me certain books not in booktube or anything like that just so you're aware i'm not talking about anyone who's watching this um i'm purely talking about people i've encountered in my past in real life but yeah and i hate it when that happens because they just don't listen to you and i'm like i know what i enjoy reading i like to read good books and i also like to read trash sometimes and that's just how i work but anyway, yeah, so that is the book snob tag. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought the questions were really interesting and like I think they're good at provoking discussions. So if you have anything to discuss based on what I've said, um, do comment down below. I would love that. I am going to tag three people. I'm going to tag Nicole from Beautiful Chaos of Books. I'm going to tag Zach from Zach Tries to Read. And I'm going to tag Simone from Me, Simone and I. And there's not really any reason to me picking these people. I'm just kind of picking them because I want to know their answers to these questions. But yeah, you don't have to do this tag if I've tagged you. And if you watch my stuff and you want to do this tag, then go ahead. Because I, like I said, I think it's like some good discussion questions. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out massively. And I hope to see you next time.